It's good to be back. King Kong. Yes, indeed. Yeah. All day long. Let the haters hate. We're going to congratulate. Brothers and sisters, it's good to be back. Last time I was here with you all was five years ago. We was at a community center or a library. Can't remember. Some of you may have been there. It's been five long years, and one of the reasons for that five long years is because it was difficult to find a location to host the event. Although I speak a lot, and although I'm an educator, I'm not the boogeyman, school psychologist, I'm not the boogeyman, but as you might imagine, a lot of people take issue with my views and platforms on different things. And so they're often fearful to allow me to come in and speak. Nothing ever comes of it, but just the hype, the hype of the negativity that surrounds Dr. Umar is sometimes too much for some brothers and sisters to allow me to use their space. That's one of the reasons you rarely see me speak at a public school or a charter school, although I'm a principal in the school psychologist. And that is because my message some of which you're going to hear about today for all my parents who are here with the beautiful children. My message is one that exposes the misdeeds of the public school, the charter school, the parochial school, the independent school. But with all that being said, it doesn't really make a difference to me because I have to do the work regardless. A lot of people ask me, they say, Dr. Umar, what keeps you keeping on? through the sabotage, in the hate, in the slander, in the gossip. What keeps you keeping on? And I would answer that by saying my self-belief that I was born to do this work. Some people come to black consciousness for a lot of different reasons. Some come because the white man pulled the chair out from under them and they fell on the floor. And so they embrace black consciousness as a reaction to being rejected by the white power structure. And these types of Negroes are dangerous because if you only came home because the white man rejected you, if he sends you another invitation, you might go back to him. Other brothers and sisters come to consciousness because their economic situation bellied out from under them. Others come to consciousness as a result of going through the stripes and struggles of being on the streets, which is fine. Others come to consciousness as a result of being around other conscious brothers and sisters. Nothing wrong with that either. But for me, I came to it as a child, fourth grade, Mead Elementary School, North Philadelphia, and I never left. So the degrees never changed me because ever since I was nine, I believe I was meant to play a role in the liberation of African people. And when I found out I was related to Frederick Douglass around the sixth grade, that solidified that for me. And when in the third grade, I decided to be a psychologist. So third grade psychologist, fourth and fifth black history class, sixth grade Frederick Douglass, so by the time I left elementary school, I knew what I would be doing with my life. That's my path. So money can't change me, degrees can't change me, whole teppers can't change me, haters can't change me. I'm here to stay, I'm real. Which is why I don't go around trying to prove that. I don't go around trying to prove that, Las Vegas, because I believe if I just do the work, you'll see it. I regularly get brothers and sisters who come up to me and say, Dr. Umar, I owe you an apology. I was one of those haters until you saved my child. I was one of those haters until you bought that school. And there's going to be others who are going to come with their apologies after the school opens. And that's OK, too, if you were not a public nuisance to the mission. But if you are a public nuisance to the mission, I'm going to have to enter your name in the Book of Negroes. And y'all know what the Book of Negroes is. That's a book that has all my haters in it. Every last one you can think of, all the YouTubians and everybody else. 
And they gonna come crawling up to the front of our school because it's not mine, it's ours. And they're going to come crawling up to the front of the school saying, Doc, I'm sorry. Can't come in, brother. Because even if you disagreed, you could have kept your mouth shut. You didn't have to sabotage and undermine. It's one thing to say, I don't trust Dr. Umar. It's one thing to say, I don't believe in Dr. Umar. It's one thing to say, I think he's spending all the money. And keep that to yourself as an opinion. But once you put it on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, and once you make a thousand videos a week, you understand, at that point you became a public opposer to saving our children from the psychoacademic holocaust. And that we can't tolerate. So what is the psychoacademic holocaust black parent and black community? It's six stages that America created to destroy all masculine African children. The girls too, but mostly the boys. Stage one, miseducation. It is intentional, it is not an accident, it is on purpose. And I need you to understand that the miseducation of black children in Nevada is intentional. It doesn't happen because the father's not in the home. It doesn't happen because he's in jail. It doesn't happen because the mother's not married. It doesn't happen because he likes basketball. It doesn't happen because he listens to gangster rap. It happens because the American white power structure cannot let the black boy compete equitably with the white one. It's about preserving white privilege. And because the miseducation of our children is about preserving white privilege, the schools have to fail. I need some water, Sister Freedom. Gosh, the CIA didn't touch this water, right? <laughs> it's the city that killed Tupac. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful. A mic. All right. Is that an agent device? <laughs> With flavor enhancing minerals. Yeah, that's the shit y'all put in college that do Muhammad drink too. <laughs> but I'm ready when you are. But brothers and sisters, The miseducation preserves the white privilege. I need you to get that. Which is to say, as long as we let our kids get educated by white folks or their curriculum, we'll never catch up. Because your enemy is never going to prepare you in the art of taking their power and domination away from you. That's never going to happen. So until we build our own schools for our own children, our babies will always be a step behind this. Protecting white privilege. That's why 90% of America's teachers are white women. The white woman plays a very important role in the destruction of black male masculinity because her job is to psychologically disarm the victim. The white woman's job is to psychologically disarm the black male child. To make him think she's an ally. They use her to do the same thing with adult black males. Charles Barkley's wife and Jalen Rose's wife and all these other ones. To psychologically disarm you and also economically neutralize you. Because a black millionaire with a white woman will never use those dollars for revolutionary purposes. The white woman is brilliant in her ability to make black males think she empathizes with you. That's her job. And the white male does the same thing with the black female. He gets inside the mind of the black woman and make you think he really cares about you. It's the same man that been raping your grandmother for four centuries, but all of a sudden, he cares about you. 
But you notice they only care up until a point. Because when that police officer shot Micaiah Bryant four times in the chest, the white man didn't show that compassion. He only shows it when he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation with you. If you notice, white folks never organize to save black folks. They only verbally empathize with black folks. And this is why Negroes love to come and tell Dr. Umar, I know some good white people who speak up against what happens to us. But can you show me some who do something about it? It's not the words. It's the actions. We get brainwashed because a white person will come here and give you two hours of white supremacy and say, I understand black folks, and then drive his privileged white ass back home to a gated community in the suburb, and if he sees anything black outside of his house at night, won't hesitate to dial 911 12 hours after he told you how much he loves black folks. White people are masters of mental manipulation, but let me not give them too much credit. Let me not give your oppressor too much credit because if you were not still in love with him, it would be difficult for him to manipulate you. It is your desire to be accepted by your oppressor that makes it difficult for you to do anything about the oppression. So let's get back to these six stages in the psychoacademic holocaust so they miseducate the black kids on purpose. The white woman's job, psychological disarmament. And then after they miseducate the black kids, they then come with the special education. Now, black parents, I'm a little angry at you guys. I've been looking at some of the Las Vegas special ed numbers, and they're very high for black children. You parents in here are screwing up by letting these white folks evaluate our children. Stop doing it. White people have no business evaluating black folks. You take your child to a white psychologist to solve problems that white people created. How does that happen? How does that work? The psychologist can't cure you or save you because the diagnosis is racism. You're angry, why? Because of racism. You went to jail, why? Because of a lack of opportunities, racism. You don't have a man in the house, why? Because America's war against black masculinity, racism. Is the psychologist going to do anything about that? Hell no. In fact, psychology helped to create racism. It was the psychologist who invented segregation, who invented white genetic superiority, African inferiority. The word eugenics is a psychology concept. The word special ed is a psychology concept. They invented it. How the hell are they going to take it back? Special ed, invented by an act of US Congress, 1975. Public Law 94-142, the Education for All Handicapped Children Act. The Education for All Handicapped Children Act. Why did they give a special ed in 75? Because of Brown versus Board in 54. That said you can't use race as a factor in the schools no more. So white folks lost their mind. And from 1954 to 1974, we saw the largest growth in independent private schools in American history. You know why? The minute they said they had to desegregate, white folks pulled their kids out and opened their own schools. The private school industry was a result of school desegregation. And then what you do is you go chase the white folks out to the suburbs and pay $15,000 a year for your child to become a master of Christopher Columbus, Helen Keller, and Anne Frank. And then when your son wants a white girl for the prom or your daughter wants blue contacts permanently, you call up Dr. Umar, what's wrong with my child? You, because you stuck them in a self-hate incubator. You stuck your child in a self-hate incubator for 12 years, 6 years, 4 years, 
and wonder why they came out wanting to be white. Because the purpose of education is to deify European culture and thought. The purpose of education is to deify European culture and thought. They don't teach our kids how to think. They teach them how to worship white people. Show me a school in Las Vegas that doesn't teach black kids how to worship white people. Even the Afrocentric schools are teaching them how to worship white people. You got a whole army of black teachers with dashikis on with a blind head full of weed. What the hell is that? And that's why at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, ladies, gentlemen too, because I heard the brothers wear gold out here too in the head. I'm picking with you. You cannot work at that school with a weave or a perm or European hair color. We will not tolerate 100% unapologetically African academy. Because before you can change anything else about the black child or mine, you have to change the way they think about themselves. Michelle Obama, Condoleezza Rice, these are good examples of black women, well-educated, successful according to European standards, a total failure by African cultural standards. Yeah. If you don't love yourself, you have been miseducated. I don't care how much money you make. Kamala Harris got on TV last week and said America is in a racist country. And this is who y'all broke y'all necks in November to go vote. You were standing up in a hot Nevada sun, 300 degrees. We want Senator Kamala. Throat was dry, funky, deodorant, and ran down. I'm exercising my right to vote. Negroes love to tell you how much they exercise and they right to vote. That's my right to vote. OK. But why haven't you exercised your right to build your children their own schools yet? Yeah. Why haven't you exercised your right to build a black hospital in Nevada? Why haven't you exercised your right to build a black bank, a black supermarket, a black shipping line, a black manufacturing industry? What about those rights? You know why we love to vote? It requires no sacrifice of time or money. You know why you like to pray? It requires no sacrifice of time or money. You know why you like to march or protest? It requires almost no sacrifice of time and no sacrifice of money. Negroes think you're fighting to be free as long as you don't use no money. And I'm here to tell you that until you organize your dollars for liberation, there will never be no black power. See, Chinese power is founded on the Chinese dollar. Jewish power is founded on the Jewish dollar. Italian, East Indian, Arab, their power is founded on the foundation of their dollar. We want black power without an organized black dollar. You'll never get that. Why is Joe Biden ignoring black folks? Because Joe Biden can ignore black folks because you're the only people in America who vote just because you have a right to do it. You're the only people in America who vote because the Negro bourgeoisie tells you to. You're the only people in America who vote without first getting some campaign pledges before you cast that vote. You have to change the way you function. I'm in total support of a no vote for black people this coming president's election. Show them the power by not giving it to them. He's talking about my ancestors died for me to vote. That's a lie. They didn't die for you to vote. They died for you to get free. Voting was the strategy and tactic in their lifetime that they felt would most likely lead to the freedom. Stop confusing goals with tactics. Nonviolence for Dr. King was a tactic. By any means necessary for Malcolm was a tactic. You don't predetermine tactics. Tactics are determined based upon the circumstances of the battlefield. If being nonviolent going to win us something, we'll be nonviolent. If being violent is going to win us something, we'll be violent. Stop making tactics the goals. The goals have nothing to do with the tactics. The goal is liberation. But let's be honest, most black people don't really want to be free because freedom requires responsibility. 
Black men, we really got to ask ourselves, collectively, are we ready for the white man to take back his welfare, his Section 8 housing, his food stamps, his medical care? Because the white man can roll up on us at any minute and say, black man, you say, we are undermining your masculinity by giving your woman all these free handouts. We want to take them back and leave the hood. And that means me and we, the black man, got to step up and fulfill what the white man took away. We got to be willing to do that. But let us be honest. If the white man left Las Vegas today, a group of Negroes would go get him and bring him back tomorrow. That's how much we love white folks. We are in love with white people. Oh, yes, we are. Are you aware we're the only people in the world who got freedom without fighting their oppressor to get it? You're the only people in the world who got freedom without fighting your oppressor in direct confrontation. You got your freedom by fighting with your oppressor. You fought with Abraham Lincoln against the Confederates. You never fought Abraham Lincoln. I want you to understand this. It's what you call the great compromise of 1865, as I call it, when those 204,000 black men who fought in the Civil War in that one black female general, the only woman in American history to lead, lead troops in the battle, Queen Mother Harriet Tubman. After we won the war for Abraham Lincoln, we should have declared war on Abraham Lincoln. Are y'all following me? One of the greatest mistakes black people made in America, after winning the war for Abraham Lincoln, we should have declared war on Abraham Lincoln. We might have ended up with four or five states that y'all wanted. Because the US Congress would have said, if these Negroes was able to damn near single-handedly knock off the Confederacy, imagine what they'll do to us. We might have a compromise. But because that white Jesus image is deeply embedded within your subconscious, it's hard for you to declare war on the European because your deity looks like your enemy. And when you think of Jesus, you don't think of a black man. You think of a white one because that is the public image of Jesus in the African mind. See, there's three Jesuses in the Bible. Or excuse me, two. There's Jesus Christ and Jesus Cracker. Some of you worship Jesus Christ. Some of you worship Jesus Cracker. And I'm going to make sure you understand the difference. Jesus Christ was born in the manger. Excuse me. Jesus Christ was born in the cave in Ethiopia. Jesus Cracker was born in a manger in Bethlehem. Jesus Christ was blue, black, purple. Jesus Cracker was a white man with blue eyes. Jesus Christ was hung on a tree. Jesus Cracker was hung on a cross. Jesus Christ was an Ethiopian revolutionary. Jesus Cracker was a metrosexual white man. There's a difference. That image of the Christ is still in the black home today. When I go to homes and do therapy, I still see white Jesus. 400 years later, he's still on your wall. And so one of your assignments today, Las Vegas, is to go home, take down the white Jesus, and burn it. Burn it. And the reason I'm telling you to burn it is because if you sit it outside, Another Negro will come and get the picture and take it home and hang it up. You got to burn the damn crap. Who threw out this good white Jesus picture like this? It's a damn good picture. I had a brother in Jamaica, the land of Garvey and Marley. He hand painted a black Jesus for his church. This is a true story. He hand painted a black Jesus for his church. And he thought the pastor would be happy. The pastor refused for that painting to ever be hung in his church. The white one is still there. See, this is why we can't talk about economic revolution and political revolution and cultural and intellectual and spiritual revolution until it's a psychological revolution. If you don't kill the Negro inside, the African will never be resurrected. 
You have to kill the Caucasian living in you. All of us got the European in us. Every black woman got a white girl. Every black man got a white boy living in you trying to take over your consciousness. Have you ever seen the movie Alien? Alien is an excellent metaphor for post-traumatic slavery disease in Willie Lynch. The alien is the white power structure. You are the victim. And what does the alien do? It goes looks for people, snatches them up, and then plants the seed inside. That's the Willie Lynch. And that seed sits there, you can't tell that the Willie Lynch is in the Negro at first, can you? We still look like regular black folks. And then one day you wake up and the damn cracker busts out your ass. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You was going fine. You had on your dashiki. You went to Egypt five times. You changed your name. My eyebrow gap smut on poo canad gap. Right? Ashanti cheese steak, French toast. Franken six, green smoothie. Right? And then one day, that cracker bust out you and you ain't never been the same since. But here's the most important lesson about the alien. Once the cracker comes out, the African automatically dies. Do you see that? The purpose of white supremacy is to kill African consciousness. So let's get back to the special ed thing. All my parents in here, I want to give you 10 rules for the schools. And of course, you're going to get my book today so you can get all the other rules that you need. 550 pages. You're going to be reading all summer long. Rule number one, never sign anything you don't take home and read. Black mother, I'm ho I hope you're listening. You have a bad habit of signing any paperwork that the school throws in your face. Stop doing it. The schools depend on black parents to not care enough to read. Don't sign it unless you take it home. And if they tell you we need it today because we're up against the deadline, you tell them that's your fault. If you needed this today, I should have had it last week. This is going home. I'm going to review it with my child's mother, my child's father, my parents. We make all decisions as a family. And then if I decide to sign it, you might, you might get it tomorrow. You have to teach the schools how to treat you. No more signing paperwork on the spot. That's number one. Don't sign nothing at the school, take it home. Number two, never, and I'm just grabbing my top. Number two, Number two, never sign a release of information form. I hope you're listening, parents. Never sign a release of information form. What is the release of information? It is a form you sign giving the school permission to go behind your back and talk to any professionals that work with your family or child. Why would a black parent give white people permission to talk about your child behind your back without your knowledge? They can call the pediatrician behind your back, probation officer behind your back, caseworker behind your back, therapist behind your back. Never sign release of information. You know what you tell them? If there's ever a need for you to talk with my child's pediatrician, if there's ever a need for you to talk to my child's therapist, if there's ever a need for you to talk to my family social worker, we will schedule a conference so the three or four or five of us can talk face to face. Are y'all following me, black people? That's how you do that. Don't you ever sign that. And many of you have signed it and don't even know you signed it. 
Let me tell you how this happened. See, I was a principal. What they do in the schools, at the beginning of the year, they send you a packet of information to sign. Y'all remember that packet? You get it every year, right? What's in that packet? Free lunch form. Milk in a bag and shit, right? So you sign that. Then they give you early dismissal. Class trip. Permission to see the nurse if they get hurt, right? And then you get tired of signing all them papers that you just start signing and flipping and you not reading. And guess what's at the bottom of the pack? Release of information. So one day you get a phone call from Child Protective Services of Lawson, Little Bay, Nevada, talking about we got to do an investigation because the school called your social worker and told them that your son came to school every day with the same clothes and he was smelling. And you say, how did the school call my social worker behind my back without my knowledge? I never gave him permission. Oh, yes, you did. It was that last paper you was too lazy to read before you signed it. I work in the schools. I'm telling you what they do. They stick it in the back because they say by the time they get to the fifth one, they're not reading. They just sign it. But I also want you to know that you can rescind it. All you have to do is write a letter and say, I am rescinding the release of information from this day forward. You have no legal right to contact any professional service providers for my family or child. I need you to understand that you can rescind anything you give to the school. Did y'all hear that? Guess what else you can rescind, black parents? And by the way, what I'm giving you is federal law. So whether you live in Nevada, California, Seattle, New York, Houston, everything I tell you today, you use wherever you go. I'll be going to St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands soon, because they need the information, because although they're not a state, they're U.S. territory. Special ed over there, too. The other thing you can give back is permission for them to evaluate your child. In other words, some of y'all sitting here right now, you gave them permission to evaluate your child. But you're hearing some stuff from Dr. Umar today, and you're going to read some stuff in Dr. Umar's book you want to buy today that's going to convince you that my baby don't need to be tested right now. But Dr. Umar already told him to do it. You can resend it, write a letter. And I have a sample letter in my book that you can copy and send in. And it says, I'm hereby notifying the school, or I'm hereby demanding that all testing and evaluation procedures being conducted on my child be terminated immediately. I am no longer interested in the psychological evaluation at this time. Should I change my mind in the future, I will request another evaluation. You can stop it. And guess what? As the school psychologist, if I get that form, I can't get your kid no more. It's done with. I don't care if I'm in the middle of the IQ test. If I get that letter saying the parent said no more testing, I'm rescinding my request, the testing stops immediately. Or I can lose my job or credential. You can always take it back, parents. Number one, you don't sign. Number two, don't sign a release of information. Number three, don't go to any meetings by yourself. Mothers bring the father, father bring the mother. If mother and father ain't getting along, mother find a brother, uncle and cousin. Father bring a niece, auntie. It's always good to have both genders represented. Because if you show up with a whole bunch of brothers with no woman, they're going to say you try to turn the place out. Right? And sisters, you've got to bring a man with you in case they try to get disrespected. So it's good to balance out. And sisters in Las Vegas, if you can't.